What's up, ladies and gents in Cyberland? So, I'm coming back with another music review from my band, Linkin Park. Hunting Party, or The Hunting Party. So, with The Hunting Party, when I was talking about Victimized from Living Things, remember I mentioned that um, Victimized was where they utilized, I felt like that song gave, not necessarily gave them the opportunity, but it was kind of like, you get that song, you get this album. So this album was not one I think that was really broadcasted as much as everything before it. It was kind of like, it was coming back in layers as opposed to how the other albums were. And the first song I had heard from it was Guilty All The Same. And when I heard it, I was like, okay, I can already tell this is going to be a very aggressive album. It's not going to be like the last two albums for sure. Is it going to be more like Minutes to Midnight or Meteor or Hybrid Theory? At that point, I couldn't tell because that's just one song. However, when Mike stated after the song that the album was going to be like the album that, that if it, it would be like the prequel to Hybrid Theory, I was like, oh, okay, so this is going to be a very aggressive album. I'm already liking that already. And it was interesting when I heard Guilty All the Same because I liked it better than Burn It Down. And it was different. Also the fact that it was a long song and everything going on in the song which made me even more be like, oh, I can't, I'm really looking forward to, hot, to uh, the hunting party. And then the, the big thing was we had the legendary MC Rakim uh, over the track. And I was like, whoa. And Rakim has not been, I don't know, I don't know how many songs he's done on other people's albums, but to hear him on a Linkin Park, I was like, that was really cool. I, I really like that, because I think Rock Kim is one of the greatest MCs of all time. His metaphors and everything, and especially hearing what he had to say on Guilty All the Same was, was just wonderful. And I think that was the only track I heard, because again, this one was more of a quiet release as opposed to the other stuff. It wasn't like there was just singles popping up everywhere. And I think at this point, a lot of people were just like Linkin Park, like, oh, that's so yesterday. It didn't feel like the coverage for this album was was as much as whatever was going on with music at the time. Or I think Mike said at the time, music was when in a place where it was just all poppy and, and cliche and cookie cutter, which it was. So it was good. And I'm glad that they went against the grain and didn't didn't go that route. So I'm really happy with that. And then when the album leaked, of course, I had already... I was just waiting for my, my, my copy to show up in the mail. And right when I heard Keys to the Kingdom, I was like, oh, 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 whoa, what? Really? Oh, okay. You know, hearing Chester screaming, coming right in, and Mike rapping. And I, I was like, oh, and then... The, the drum, out of all the albums, Rob, for his drumming, this was probably the most, I think, the, the most aggressive he has ever been on any of the albums. And he was just, man, he, he was really all over the place. He, he was fantastic. Everybody was great, but Rob really stuck out, too, because he had never, you never really heard songs like that uh, up until this point, the drumming for it, like not that fast and stuff. So I was like, okay, and then All For Nothing, my favorite track on the side. You know what's funny? Keys of the Kingdom was my favorite track, and then the more now I listen to I think All For Nothing is my favorite track, really because of Paige um, Hamilton from uh, Helmet. Just hearing him sing the chorus, I think, would grab me more. And then Guilty All The Same, and War was just, you know, it was just a song. Wastelands is good. And I think a lot of the element, what what really got me about, because, you know, if, if I rank the albums right now, I would say Meteor, of course, and The Hunting Party, then Hybrid Theory. Those are my top three Linkin Park albums. And what really makes me like high, uh, Hunting Party more than Hybrid Theory is not necessarily the guitars or anything. It's just the elements that are incorporated into the songs. You got a little bit of punk. You got a little bit of rock. You got uh, alternative you got a little bit of metal. So you have a lot more elements of rock than you did with, per se, and then hip-hop, than per se with Hybrid Theory. But Meteor is still going to be my favorite album anyway. And the other guest we had was Darren, I don't know how to say it, Malekian, I think, from uh, System of Down, the guitarist. 
He was on uh, Rebellion. And then Tom Morello. Now, Tom Morello, I was a little disappointed with his, his part just because, you know, we all know Tom Morello for his guitar playing and, and the sound he gives from Rage. So hearing him in here was cool, but it was just like, okay. Well. But then again, maybe it's because I've never heard really Tom Morello's solo stuff, so maybe that's why. I was just thinking you would have something from there, but that wasn't the case. For rating, I give it five out of five yes sirs. Not one track I don't like. I love this entire album. And for my top five songs, uh, All For Nothing, Keys of the Kingdom, Final Masquerade, uh, Wasteland, and this is always a hard one. It's either A Line in the Sand or Mark the Graves because you kind of have it to where, you know, I love both those tracks. And I'm going to say A Line in the Sand because I really liked how the way they ended the album with that, that was a strong end for the album, just like with Meteora and Hybrid Theory and uh, um, Thousand Suns too, And even Powerless for uh, Living Things. But A Lion in the Sand was just like a full-fledged, just boom, boom, you know? I really loved that. I, I really loved how it started and just how... And then the other thing I really like about Hunting Party is that you just had longer tracks. You had just, it, it was almost like, I don't know if they were trying to say this is our last time doing guitars and stuff like this, but it was so refreshing just to have all that and not be, not be put in the box where we only shorten the songs, you know. And then it's interesting too, when I hear fans talk about Linkin Park, a lot of people say, I don't like Hunting Party, I don't like Hunting Party. And I always think, and a part of me, I get a little irritated. But then when I look at how they rank their albums, I say, oh, that makes sense. You don't like guitars. <laughs> you don't like the rock aspect of Linkin Park because half of the albums you rank in high, most of the hardcore fans rank at the bottom. You know, I'm not like, and this is no disrespect to Linkin Park fans if you like uh, the electronic side, but I'm not ranking those higher than the guitar aspect because that's not what they started with. That's what they branched into for a little bit, but that's not what Linkin Park is known for. They're known for being a band. I, you know, and that's not to discredit Thousand Sons or Minutes to Midnight or Living Things. However, uh, I am one to, I, I know if Linkin Park had come out with Thousand Sons as their first album, I wouldn't have really cared. Like, because I have Nine Inch Nails, but they came out with Hybrid there and they got my attention. So the rest is history. So with that, there isn't anything in this album that preludes to what, what's coming later. Um, unlike, you know, Minutes to Midnight and uh, Meteora and especially Hybrid Theory. But, you know, for that being said, it's a great album, great listen, one of my favorites, and yeah. Yeah, I've been hating more the time I wasn't hating for. There's nothing.